question. What do these jobs have in common? Accountant, carpenter, beautician, electrician, photographer, graphic artist, interior designer, choreographer, writer, chef, seamstress. They all work in the Oklahoma film industry. And there's a place for you to join the action. Learn more about starting your film career in Oklahoma by visiting okfilmmusic.org forward slash getting started. Hi, I'm Jacob Ryan Snobble. I am a producer with my company Perm Machine uh, based in Oklahoma. I've done more than 10 feature films on several different budget levels. So I'm pretty familiar with the post-production process both in the traditional sense and the way I was uh, trained and then um, following that up with um, how to actually get it done. As filmmakers, we can get bogged down in the process trying to do it the right way and we can forget that the real objective here is to finish our film. So hopefully I can highlight some of those things, get you ready for what you should expect and um, let you know what things are negotiable and what things are not. Um, that would be the goal here um, for me because I want you to finish your movies. First thing you do is get organized. The reason why you need to be highly organized is because you are probably not doing this with money. If you've got money, I don't know why you're listening to me. Um, if you don't have money, and I mean a lot of money, then you're doing this mostly by yourself or you're convincing people to work with you for zero dollars or very low amount that is not really worth it to them. Uh, they would just, they have to like you and they have to want to be a part of a completed project. Um, so you have to manage those people quite a bit, keep them on track, um, or you're doing it by yourself and you can burn out really fast. So the way to stay motivated and keep the momentum going, which is the main thing, is to be highly organized. When you are burned out from editing a scene, you can take a day's take a day off from editing and work on something different. Get your uh, emails straightened up. Get your uh, queries out to sales agents or distributors or whatever you're doing. Uh, you can jump to the next task without losing momentum on the project. Um, because if you stop for a day. Uh, it'll turn into three days, and then you start waiting for other people to get back to you, and then you lose weeks at a time. Um, it can get daunting. There's a lot to do, and you're juggling a lot. Things that you'll need, tools, software, hardware. Um, the organization part of it, I use Google Sheets. It's the best thing to use. Um, you can share it. You can use it on your mobile phone. Um, it works like Excel, and it's pretty versatile, and you keep it all in the same like tabs and stuff. It's free. Um, and if you do get more people involved, you can just share it to them and they can kind of see what their tasks hardware. You'll obviously you'll want a computer or someone with a computer. If somebody else is editing, um, you'll want two terabytes minimum, um, hard drives Two, you want two, two terabyte minimum hard drives, one to work with one for backups two terabytes is still pretty small for working off of but um you'll figure that part out um i'm not an it guy editing software um if you if there's any kind of question use black magic's da vinci look it up it's free and there are upgrades that are pretty inexpensive but the main thing about that is it's professional not only is it professional it's also, um, it will mirror whatever interface you're used to doing, or if you plan on one day doing Avid or Adobe Premiere, um, it just, it actually just copies that interface. Really great for college students who can't pay for the Avid license. You, you were trained on Avid, you know, you got the Avid uh, whatever certification, and now you're supposed to buy it. Well, DaVinci will do just fine. Um, it also uh, builds in color correction tools, which you can learn. There's plenty of tutorials that are always free. Uh, sound editing, editing uh, stuff is in there. Special effects is in there, and it exports really solidly uh, to the files you'll need. File types that you will need, a DCP file. That's what they show in theaters. That's the file you have to give everyone uh, at a festival. 
that's what they play it off of. You'll also want an MOV file that's really high quality as a backup. And also, you'll want to upload that to uh, YouTube or Vimeo if you want to pay for that account. Um, and uh, the reason why you want to upload it on there, you keep it as unlisted, you can password protect it. You send that link to people every time they ask for it because you can get special invites to festivals uh, when they hear the title or the premise. You'll get, especially if you get into one festival, you'll get invites to other festivals that are on that same style of circuit. Um, so that's that's good to have. You'll also run against uh, sales agents that'll come up, you know, out of nowhere, and they'll want to take a look at it. Um, if there's any, if you're having a question about, well, what about piracy? Then that tells me you've got a movie that nobody's going to know about in the first place to pirate, and you know what are what are they going to do with a movie <laughs> that you can't do? Um, and once it gets to like some place that would be big that somebody would want to pirate it, um, then they will um, a distribution company will take care of that stuff. So have that available, and um, yeah. So the next thing, contact list. You'll want to keep a running contact list of people, and I also use this in Excel. Cast and crew. Um, a paperwork check sheet. So let me show you what that looks like. I've got the title, position, and the name. Uh, deal memos are what you're tracking. Um, if you're looking at the re uh, rebate or if you're paying people, you'll want a W-4. If you're doing the rebate, you'll need the res form, the bill, the ID. That's all that stuff. That's what that means. Anybody that gives you money, you want to track that as well and have an operating agreement. You don't actually need that to finish a film, but if you get it out to a sales agent, they'll want those things. These are all things that maybe you didn't have time to take care of in the moment. And that's okay. If you keep this in your sheet of contacts and things, you will be able to uh, keep up with it. As you're editing, when you get pauses, when you remember somebody was involved, you just switch over to your paperwork tab and uh, you know make a list of all the things you need to get done. And then put an X in them when they're done file them away or even expand this out a little the column out and just write in where the files located all of that is so super helpful you'll also want a running list on festivals and your distribution contacts now that's important because all of this stuff will come at you while you're trying to just edit and you can lose a lot of a momentum on that festival side if you're not responding to stuff now this won't happen if you're a first time filmmaker, um, but it will happen um, as soon as you get into one festival or another. Um, so that's what this looks like. It's pretty simple for distribution contacts. I just list the name, whether they're a sales agent or a distribution rep, email, phone, company, and then notes about them. So you'll get on conversations with them. You'll want to keep track of them because uh, they'll want to know what you're doing next as well. And you can sell your next film before you're actually finished with your run on this one. For festival contacts, um, you know, you list the festival, the location, deadline, notification date, festival date, and then specific categories. So like if you're an Oklahoma filmmaker, you definitely want to enter dead center and list in here that Oklahoma. Or if you've got a legitimate shot at, you know, there's a category for thriller. Well, list it in there for Thriller. That's what you entered as. Um, and then you want to keep track of the premier regions that are required. So, like, you don't want to end up going to Bare Bones when you could have gotten, and you do that first when you could have gone to Dead Center. You want to wait until you're, you want to start your cycle at Dead Center because Dead Center requires an Oklahoma premiere if you're going to have your, if you're going to be in that. Um, whereas Bare Bones doesn't. So, um, you're, you would want to start your Oklahoma tour in dead center and then move around. Some of them are like regional, um, with Mickey Reese's alien. We actually won dead center and that was our goal is to get into dead center. And once it got, you know, picked up and moved around, they tried to get us into the Toronto international film festival. Obviously, had we known we had a shot at that, we would have waited to get into that. But because we had already spent our world premiere, we couldn't do they couldn't squeeze us into uh, Toronto. Um, but 
also because we kept in contact with that person that wanted us there. He uh, wanted to know what else we were working on. We already had another movie ready. Sent him the link. He loved it. He got us into Fantastic Fest that year. Um, so that's how that works. And it is worth keeping in contact with all of these people. Now, remember, what's the most important part of your film? It's making the movie. So baseline for making the movie, for finishing it in post-production, if you've got no budget or low budget, it is still, you have to edit and then hate it, re-edit it, hate it again, and then re-edit. Then you're probably ready to start dealing with sound mix. Use a professional, pay for the professional. Or if you're going to do it yourself, spend money to get somebody to teach you how to do it. But really, that will set you apart from everything else, is if you have a professional sound mix, it will make up for how terrible your lighting is. <laughs> um, it will make up for it more so than color correction will. So that is the one thing that I would say you have to pay for. Um, save up money for it. Do what deals you can do, um, but get somebody who cares about it, who geeks out about sound. If you're going to pay less, if you're going to pay a non-professional, they have to geek out about sound. Make sure they're nerds. Um, and then you want to also be keeping track of what are your best behind-the-scenes uh, photos and action shots from the film, because those are assets that the festival will want, especially the major ones. They'll want that, and they'll use it. The better they are, the more qual high quality they are, the more they'll put that into their publication because they like to have that stuff too. They want cool looking stuff to get people to get to their festival. So the better your shots are that you can send out for print or online, uh, the more attention you can get for and in that festival. Um, and then you're going to edit again. Just never be done. So let me reiterate, the most important thing is to keep your momentum moving forward to finish the movie. That is post-production. Don't get bogged down. Either delegate tasks to people who care about you and your project, and they got to care about you first. Them caring about your projects probably not going to happen. Uh, they care about you. Um, so get those people, delegate to those people if, if you're not able to juggle. But as long as you're moving forward to finish the project, don't get lost in creating a website or in all that stuff and all of these tasks that have to be done. Edit. There's honestly no set timeline, but all of these tasks need to be done by the time you actually finish your film. But when you lock that picture, that's when you're going to need all of this other stuff in place and it will help actually move your move yourself forward more. Um, so it's hard to say this should take this long. This should take that long. Also, a lot of these tasks involve getting answers from other people. So when you send an email to somebody for answers, they're going to come back with more questions. And if you're not answering them right away, they're not answering you right away. That can stretch out for months when you're just trying to get a couple of answers. So um, know that it is a juggling act and there are, you know, hours of work you can kind of set timelines to, but you're not dealing with all professionals here. So you can't. And even then, you the reason why you have to pay those professionals hourly is because nobody really knows how long it takes. Um, so the again, we're going to go back to staying organized and knowing those tasks that are in line. So let's look at some of those. So this is from my spreadsheet that I keep. This is my timeline that I've developed. Cost reports. The reason why you track your cost reports is because even if you didn't set up something else and it's coming out of your own money, you want to know how much money you spent on every little thing, including coffee for the editor that you, you know, tricked into editing one scene. Um, keep that, keep that listed because number one, eventually you're going to pay for a tax person. You're not doing your taxes on your own. Trust me on this one. Pay somebody to do your taxes. <laughs> Those are all write-offs, but also it's going to tell you, how much to plan for on your next movie. You're going to know soft costs and soft costs and hard costs based on how much you actually spend. And all of that is valuable information. Um, so you're going to get a rough assembly. 
if you can get somebody out of college that's really hungry to do some work, do that. Get them a rough assembly. And then you start doing your rough cut. Get in there, tweak it, uh, move things around. And then, and along the way, you're going to sound edit as well. So if you don't hire somebody to do the sound editing, do what you can to make the sound as good as you can. Pay attention to sound. Do a pass on your scene for sound. That's going to actually lower your cost for the sound mix as well. Um, the closer you get it to sounding even for taking out room tone, for adding in room tone, all of that's going to help. Um, all of this is stuff that you can learn to do on your own as well. Uh, the score, if you're paying somebody, get them in early, tweak with them, work with them, um, you know, use. And if you're not, you're still going to want to cut to some sort of music. So be on the lookout for those royalty free songs that you can use and be working them in. Um, but that's going to last, you know, that entire time. Um, sound mix you're paying for. Color correction you can learn. Um, but a, a true pro color corrector can elevate it, but it costs a lot. Um, but again, you can learn enough to make your film have a consistent look. And um, so it depends on, you know, what you're paying and, and uh, how much money you have and how much energy you have. Um, poster creation. It's a real thing. The more assets you have for print and web, the more attention you will get at festivals. If you don't know how to do Photoshop, don't mess around with a poster. Just make it simple. Credits. Okay, revisit your credits every once in a while. That's important. And remember, this is what that looks like. Your credits, uh, you're going to save a credit in your sheet. Um, that goes along. I, I save it in the tab next to the paperwork check sheet. So I'll remember to tab over and say, oh, yeah, that person has to be, you know, in there. And this is kind of the outline that I've learned to use from um, Divide Conquer. Um, that's how they track it. And it works really well. Helps keep that in line. So every, anytime you think about credits, go back in. The great thing about having that spreadsheet is when you think about it, you can list it and trying to go back in at the end and, and come up with everybody's releases and who was in what. You're going to misspell something. You're going to do something wrong. It's just going to happen. Um, so keep up with it along the way. Final edit. Once you get your final edit and everything's like in place like that, you've still got a lot of work to do. Um, a DCP file and MOV, you'll need those and you may need to look it up or have somebody help you do that. DCP companies are out there. You've also got probably a friend somewhere that knows how to do that. Get your behind the scenes organized. Uh, deliverables, that's the other hard cost. Um, you don't have to have it in place if your goal is to go to festivals. If your goal is to get distribution, get it already in place and start saving money. But that's going to cost minimum $7,500. So be saving up for that. Um, know that you can work some deals, but really it costs $7,500. And if you, you know, strike a deal with a sales agent to cover that, that's fine because your goal shouldn't be to make money if you're the filmmaker anyway. Your goal should be to get to another film and make a career out of this. Let the sales agent make money. Um, so... <laughs> Because they will. Next, uh, this is the bottom half of my budget, which I also keep this in uh, the Google Sheets. Uh, the reason why I do that and I don't use the professional budgeting software is because it's way easier to play around with something that I've designed. I mean, to play around with your costs um, and see how it affects the overall budget. Um, budgeting software isn't built for that and not built for this. Um, it's built for you know, actual entire departments managing their budget and you're just kind of like looking at the overall. So I use this one. I use this at first and now I'll be using this until I go into production and then converting over. It doesn't always work for the bigger projects. Um, so this is how I start out in yellow there. That is negotiable, negotiable prices. <laughs> Stuff that I've gotten away with at that price, those are all very low. Um, again, you want people that um, are very hungry to work with you, not the project. Don't expect anybody to care about your project. The only reason they'll work for low 
pennies and peanuts is because they care about you. Um, and always give somebody the room to say no, because you're going to pay them less than what what they're worth and what that job is worth, more than likely. Um, so be upfront about how much money you have and always pay the exact amount that you can pay, even if that means overpaying there so you can so you have to finish off the edit on your own. Uh, and just do it. Like be real about how much money you have with people. Don't try and give them money on the back end. Everybody knows that's nonsense. Um, it's nice. It's like a little cherry on top of your cake, but it's not, you know, it's not a selling point to get somebody to work on your movie. Um, so in green there, that's a that's a hard cost. Um, you know, I aim at two percent for score and sound mix, but because that's what I've heard. So I start, you can start there, but if you don't have a real budget, um, 2 percent is nonsense. Um, if you're doing a whole movie for $5,000, don't expect to pay a professional sound mix at $100. <laughs> um, but you, again, that's a hard cost as in a person. So get somebody professional or a super nerd that's willing to learn how to make that sound super sweet. Um, and then delivery and clearance, that's going to cost you $7,500 planned for that. Um, unless your goal is to go just tracking around the uh, film festivals, and, and that's great. I mean, I would, that's how we cut our teeth is, is doing festivals or just premiering ourselves and then moving to the next movie. People saw it. They got to see the movie. We got our feedback. Uh, people know we make movies, and now we're making another one. Um perfectly fine um and then fringe and payroll if you paid people expect to pay taxes and uh, uh, expect to have a lot for that so save that do that in the beginning those are hard costs you're not getting out of those again momentum organization use google sheets pay for a sound mix do everything else you can uh to to get people to help and to juggle all of those tasks that you need to do to finish your movie. That's the main thing. Um, don't get bogged down doing, you know, a social media page. You don't need a Facebook page to finish a movie. You need to edit and you need the sound design to finish a movie. Um, feel free to contact me. Um, I look forward to your questions. Um, I'm also in the office next week at Moore Norman Technology Center where our design and do curriculum for uh, visual arts industry courses for short term programs. Um, so, you know, you can come to a six week course on editing, um, anything like that. Let me know what you need more help in and I can design a course possibly. Thank you so much. Talk to you in a bit. So one of the unique things about our studio in particular is the ability for us to record a live orchestra in studio. We can host film scoring sessions for filmmakers from other states when they come here to shoot their production. This is especially attractive to filmmakers from other states because when they come here, they're not just shooting, but we're able to offer many of the post-production processes to them as well. My name is Garrett Starks, and I'm co-owner, founder of Castle Row Studios and our new post-production facility, The Post Hero. So Castle Row actually started as a house studio about eight years ago. In looking at Oklahoma and it being, you know, an attractive place for filmmakers, I really saw it as an opportunity to expand the business and move into a place that could do film scoring, that could host the needs of these films. That's exactly what we did. We outgrew that original place and, and were able to expand and, and, and find this building. But now we're able to you know, do full service music recording for films and, and TV series of all kinds. Since having such great success on the film scoring side, we've now gone on to add additional post process. This came with the inclusion of the Post Hero. At the Post Hero, we now offer full video editing, color grading, sound design, and even final delivery of a feature film. My name is Andre, and I wear a lot of hats over at Castle Room the Post Hero. 
depending on the role I'm taking on on the project, like let's say I'm an assistant editor, like my job will be going to uh, set, picking up footage, coming back to the editing bay, ingesting it, sorting, binning, labeling, organizing the entire project. So that way when like the lead editor comes in, he can just sit right down and get to work. So we really saw a need for a music studio and post-production house in Oklahoma. And that kind of came in two pieces. Number one, on the music side, we really wanted to make a place where artists could come, record their music, and it be on a level that could compete with artists in other cities who are making their music in these top level facilities. We wanted to make it to where you didn't have to leave and go to LA to make a professional sounding record. We want a place where they can showcase that talent, where they could create their music and uh, be able to compete. On the filmmaker side, we really saw an opportunity where you have all of these producers from other states wanting to come and create their film in our state. We have fantastic locations. We have a fantastic crew. Our musician base is so talented. We really have all the pieces. We just need that infrastructure to come in so that we can attract these top level filmmakers. One of the biggest factors with making sure you have a smooth post-production pipeline is organization. If your organization isn't on point from the beginning, like it's just gonna completely throw everything off down the line. So when it comes to editing, everyone has their own preference when it comes to the software they wanna use. Personally, I prefer Premiere. For my workflow, I feel like it's, I've just used it for so long and I know how to do exactly everything I need to do with it. And that's just kind of the point of it right there. Like it's finding your software that works for you that you know how to do what you need to do in it. It's definitely gonna be beneficial in the long run to be proficient in multiple software. So let's say this project comes along and they're cutting in Avid, but you only know how to use Premiere. Well, I mean, well, that's just like a job you lost alone right there since you didn't know how to use it. My name's Andre and that's just a brief overview of what I do here at The Post Hero. So if you're a filmmaker looking for a post house on your movie, you're looking for a number of things, but some of the main things to look for are communication and reliability. How well can they communicate their ideas and timelines to you? And how confident are you that they're gonna be able to deliver your film in time?